Hi, I'm hi, I'm Danny Gasparini, and welcome to Penn Voice. I am joined today by John Ford, who is the executive director of Commute.org. John, you must be busy. We are. <laughs> so this is the hot topic um, for everyone, whether or not you are a stay-at-home mom or an executive traveling down 101 or 280 or um, someone trying to get to school. Uh, traffic and traffic patterns has become the top of everyone's conversation and cocktail party. So tell us a little bit about commute.org. Commute it's very unique government agency and what you're trying to tackle. Sure, thank you for the invitation to be here today. We're a Joint Powers Authority, so we uh, serve 18 cities uh, in the county of San Mateo, and we're tasked with trying to reduce the number of single occupant vehicle uh, trips taken in San Mateo County. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to work with employers and commuters uh, and all the various agencies in the county to try to reduce the traffic. And uh, it's a challenge, that's for sure. Yeah, and, and I know it is something that everyone, the minute they get in their car to make that single occupant trip, um, is also part of their day screaming at somebody or, you know, like th what, what happened? We've got so much traffic nowadays. Yes. So I think we need to jump into some of the things, some of the programs that you are working at at commute.org to try and reduce some of those single occupant vehicle trips. Sure. Uh, and and it's, it's a funny situation, right? We have a, a booming economy. Right. We have so many people commuting into our county from other counties that it just puts a lot of pressure on the roads that we have. So what we try to do is get people to look at alternatives. It doesn't have to be a commitment to five days a week uh, using the alternative, but maybe it's public transit. Maybe you're taking a Caltrain ride or a Samtrans ride, BART. Uh, maybe you're going to carpool or vanpool. Um, so we're out promoting all of those alternatives and encouraging people to do it as often as they can. Right. And again, it's a big commitment for people to make that change from driving alone. Uh, maybe they need to pick up the kids. Maybe there's multiple trips that they need to make. So it doesn't have to be something that they do every day, but every little bit of that helps. Right. I understand that you've got some data and statistics that say even if you did an alternative um, uh, carpooling or some kind of share riding one day a week, the significant decrease um, in those miles traveled or the, that SOV um, is, is fairly significant and you, you can actually see the difference. Absolutely. So if we can get people to, like I said, maybe one day a week or one day every other week even, 10% uh, reduction in the number of vehicles on the road makes a huge difference. Right. And so it's, uh, it's up to kind of all of us. Right. Um, but it's also up to the employers to make sure that they can make that those options available to their employees. So to do that, we've got to make um, sort of this van pooling or car pooling or alternative methods pretty easy. I probably don't know, if I'm thinking about it one day, I don't know where to go, how to do it, who to connect with, and what are the opportunities. You've got a new app that tells me. We do. Um, tell us about that. So the, we have a site called commute.org, which is our primary site. And on there, we have a new site called my.commute.org. And that's a place where you can go and plan your trips, look for carpool partners, find other van pools that might be going in the same direction, mm -hmm. and even just look for the various public transit options that might work. So we encourage people to go there. And then the great thing is once you find your alternatives or even just when you're riding your bike or walking, you can put that information in and see the impact that you're making on the, on the environment mm -hmm. by making those changes. Because it's not just about the traffic. Right. It's about the environmental benefits That's that we true. get. And we need, to, we need to make sure that everyone knows that it's a double um, benefit when you're, when you're doing things like this. Right. Um, how responsive is the app? So if, if I made a decision in the morning that today could be a day that I could, in fact, um, share a ride or, or use alternative methods, um, is it something that's up to date and, um, you know, time sensitive? Yeah, great question. Um, it is not dynamic. So it's not something you're typically going to do just in the morning to try to figure out your commute mm -hmm. that day. Mm -hmm. um, but we are partnered with a lot of different technology companies that are, there's a booming market right now uh, to try to solve this problem or help all of us solve that problem. So we have a partner, for example, in San Mateo County called Scoop, and Scoop does do a dynamic carpooling. Okay. So you can uh, set up the evening before and just say, tomorrow I want to carpool. And you put in your information about where, you're, where you live and where you're going to, right. and it will find you a partner for the morning. Same thing on the way home. You up, have up until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, put in your information, say, I need that ride home, and they'll partner you up with a, with a carpool partner and get you to your home. So head to your website, commute.org, and Correct. find the Scoop 
app, download it, and now you've got that um, up-to-date, time-sensitive right. app to find yeah. alternative methods. Correct, and there are a couple of cities in the county that are actually providing discounts to use that Scoop app right now, so they're actually subsidizing those rides to try to help that impact at some of the some of the most congested areas in the county. So is it just um, for corporate use, or I, I'm just throwing this out there, if I'm going up to um, a 49er game or a Giants game or a Warrior game, can I jump uh, on and see if there's anybody else heading absolutely. up Absolutely, no, okay. yeah, yeah we're, we're actually, we work with employers, but it's really up to those commuters to make those final decisions. So we, the app is available for the commuters, it doesn't require employer participation. Um, you can use it even if you're, if you're not working. So what do you think has been the most effective method of reducing these SOVs or those trip miles um, traveled? Well, I think that participation uh, in all sorts of programs that employers are offering, one of the things that just got uh, signed into law uh, as a permanent part of the law is something called the Bay Area Commuter Benefits Program. Okay. And it requires any employer who has 100 or more employees mm -hmm. to provide some type of commute benefit to their employees. It may just be allowing them to set aside pre-tax dollars to use for commuting, which they can use on, on Caltrain or BART or Samtrans or van pooling. So having access to that pre-tax dollars mm -hmm. is a big, big uh, change. It's also why we see record ridership on public transit. So we're pushing, we're getting people out of their cars, which is great, mm -hmm. um, and we're putting them on public transit, which is fabulous, but even that's getting crowded. Right. So we also provide first and last mile shuttle services from Barton Caltrain stations in the county out to those work sites. So your organization, commute.org, is doing that last mile traveled. Correct. Um, Transportation, Right. And okay. those are partnerships with the cities that where we provide the services as, as well as the employers. And we move about 700,000 people a year from Caltrain and BART stations out to their workplaces and back. And also from their residences to the, the Caltrain and BART stations when we have routes that run through so the residential So are you area. then, um, are you contacting companies and businesses say, hey, look, here's who we are. Um, these are some of the services we provide. Or can people just learn about commute.org right now and say, I have a company, what can I do? Correct. Okay. We work very closely with about 500 of the companies in the county, but we're in contact with about 5,000 of them. How long has commute.org been in existence? Uh, that's a great question. I think uh, in our current formation since about 2000, so 15, 16 years. Okay. Have you done any statistical analysis as to what the impact has been, or are we growing at such a rapid rate? It's almost not being able to keep up with the growth no matter how much you increase your service. It has been a challenge, yeah. uh, but it's one of those ones where we are still increasing ridership and, and decreasing uh, the number of people who are driving alone. So even though it seems like the roads are, right. are beyond their capacity, and they, many of them are, we're actually reducing the drive alone rates. So people are finding those alternatives because right. it's so frustrating to sit out there in, in traffic. So they are willing to take those changes, and a lot of times it's the employers who are stepping up and also providing some type of corporate transportation, which is benefiting all of us because it's, it is reducing that, right. uh, that load on the roads. And I know, I mean, we don't have enough time to really sort of talk about the jobs, housing imbalance, but you and I even chatted earlier, even um, building housing within San Mateo County, because we've got such a, a boom, which is a wonderful thing with jobs, new jobs being created, even providing housing within the community, still people are driving within the county to work. So you're trying to even get those inner county um, residents to not drive to work, even if it's one city away. That's correct. I mean, and it is having housing close to the workplace is, right. is, is obviously the most important thing that we can so do. So they're not on the freeway, they're just in the neighborhood right. streets. Shorten down those trips, shorten the vehicle miles traveled, right. because that's really what's creating all, all the congestion is the longer commutes that are that are really hurting us. So yes, having that housing close to the transportation is best. Yeah. Having transit oriented development so that you're close to that transit, so when you do have a long commute, right. you can take the, right the alternative. So we have 30 seconds left. What do we want to leave our viewers with? Uh, Try something, okay. try something different. It, it's hard, we know it's difficult for people to make these changes. Don't have to do it 100% of the time, just give it a try, contact us at commute.org, we can help you find alternative modes, and let's work together. I think that what I, that's what I was most surprised about, I, jumping on the website and saying, I can do that, and I never even thought about it. So John, thank you, we hope the next time we have you on Penn Voice, we're gonna talk about how much we've reduced that SOV and those uh, miles traveled. Thanks again, and we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.